Inside this really rather small box, I'm told is a 3D printer. The mini 3D printer from M3D. And I'm super excited to check it out. So while we do that, maybe let's chit chat about something that, eh, while it probably doesn't matter as much, has been on my mind lately. Let's talk about 3D printing food. So the mini 3D printer from M3D, holy smokes, it is in this box. And look at the teeny tiny size of the rolls of these filament, that is adorable. I wonder if I'll be able to use regular filament with this printer. Well, let's pull it out and see what happens. So there's a couple of things about this 3D printer that I have questions about. First of all, does it have a heated bed? Secondly, if I'm reading this correctly, it has a smaller build plate than even the Monoprice Select Mini 3D printer. And is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. And thirdly, am I going to be able to get it up and running and printing today? Here's the nozzle. It's got, I can very clearly see, there is the heater element and there is the thermistor right there. It looks like it's, oh man, it's like a pen insert, that uh, tube of PTFE in it. Very, very interesting. Well, while I continue to unbox this and explore what's inside of it, oh, that's the oops, cutest little uh, power adapter. How much does this thing put out? Yeah, five volts. If this is what powers this 3D printer, there's no way there's a heated bed. But that does produce the possibility of running this thing on a battery and making it portable. Food 3D printing. It's been on my mind lately. I don't know why. I uh, just had the crazy idea that if we're going to send people to Mars, wouldn't it be neat to have a food 3D printer? Now, there have been food 3D printers before in the past, but in my opinion, they don't count. They don't count because they're not a food 3D printer. They're a machine that makes a pizza or a burrito or one menu item. It's not a food 3D printer because it doesn't take in some basic ingredients and produce a wide array of what you want. Now, one way that this could be accomplished, my first job when I was much, much younger was at Taco Bell. I got very acquainted with the kitchen at Taco Bell. You can pretty much get the entire flavor of Taco Bell in one crunch wrap supreme because it has all the beans and meat and lettuce and cheese and everything that is the flavor of Taco Bell. And it occurred to me even back then that the kitchen could potentially be automated. You just have to figure out some way to say tortilla, meat, lettuce, tomato, and just have these things drop in and boom, soft shell taco or tortilla, beans, sauce, cheese, and, you know, somehow figure out a way to fold it into a burrito. You could make 90% of the Taco Bell menu with just a couple of base items, a couple of base menu items, and a machine that could do it. And I would be fascinated to see that. But the thing about this idea is that if we're going to put astronauts on a ship to Mars, uh, the idea of having nothing but Taco Bell day in and day out has many problems that we need to address first. Uh, not the least of which being boredom. Now, the other option that I was thinking about was something that's much more like a 3D printer. Envision this with me, if you will. Uh, first of all, this idea relies on the development of a sort of neutral paste, uh, something like Soylent. It's got to have a couple of different properties. First of all, it's got to be kind of uh, runny and, and creamy if you don't cook it very much, but if you cook it a little bit, it's got to be able to get doughy, and maybe we can aerate it to make it like chewy like bread, and if we cook it even more, we can make it crackery. It's got to have this property of, of being able to pass through different phases and, and meet these targets. The reason being, 
that a lot of, of food, especially for people who maybe have lost their sense of smell or something, um, eating is less about the flavors and more about the textures. And so if we can nail texture, uh, especially for people who are on a space shuttle, who are in a sealed tube and their sense of smell is somewhat dulled, it's it's that phenomenon of of having airline food just be entirely flavorless. It's flavorless because you can't smell anything. And if you can't smell anything, you rely on, well, your tongue taste, that's your salty, sweet, bitter, and uh, uh, there's always one more, sour. And a combination of that and the texture. So number one, we have a neutral paste. Let's talk about this printer for a second. Already, I can see what we've got here. There we go, is a, I've never seen this before. This is amazing. So it's got a core XY movement system. There's, there's a belt system that kind of dances around this whole thing so that uh, they move, I think they move on all four of them, but I can't be sure about that. I'm, I'm gonna have to explore a little bit more. Let's see, that one turns, and that one turns, and those ones turn up. I, I want to break it open and see if all four of them move up to move them in the Z, and then these two to move it in the X and Y, and these two kind of do a little coordinated dance to do the movement. Oh, that's, that's cool. Well, I'm to the point now where I need to open up the manual. I need to find the manual and see how I get this thing started so while I do that, think for a little bit, maybe try to get ahead of me on this discussion of where my food 3D printer is going to go. Okay. It looks like the software is all set up and it looks like this thing only interfaces with direct access to a computer, which makes sense as there is no screen on here whatsoever. I noticed that their software comes in Linux, Mac, and Windows. So it's possible I could get this thing running with a Raspberry Pi to keep the whole portable idea going. I don't want to give up on that one because it would be so much fun. Let's see, let's run the software and 3D ink access. Yes, insert filament. Okay, so while this thing is going through its little dance, getting warmed up and getting ready to load up some filament, let's get back to talking about food 3D printing. So we got a paste that can be extruded out, but it's basically flavorless, but it does have the texture depending on how much you cook it. Then we add to it flavor. Now again, we can't get deep, complex flavors, but we could probably do some inserts with salty, sweet, bitter, and sour. Now I might add to this also spicy. We should have something that inserts just a little bit of spicy. And I should also mention that I might not be the best person to uh, discuss this with because I can't taste bitter. Yeah, there's something broken with me. I have no idea what bitter tastes like, and so I can't tell if things should be bitter. So I, I do, however, like a colorblind person knows that grass is green. I, I know what should be bitter. So yeah, don't, don't, if, if I say something should maybe be a little bit bitter and it shouldn't be, uh, just pity me a little bit. So we've got these five flavors that we can insert in, but then there's also the problem um, that we don't have any color to our inserts. Now, the quick and shortcut -y version of this would be to make the flavors colored. We put down our bready, somehow air inserted dough. Then we top that with some salty and maybe a little bit of sweet and maybe a little bit of bitter for the tomato sauce, and we keep that nice and runny. Then we put down some 
creamy. Now the sauce, we're gonna put some color in that. And since we're gonna have salty and maybe a little bit of sweet, I would say maybe our salty should be yellow and our sweet should be red so that the final result is a little bit orange. So we, we make our pizza, our cheese pizza with this way. Then for dessert, we extrude a strawberry shape built layer by layer, but make the whole thing sweet for dessert. Or we do a cake, but it's chocolate cake. So we throw in a little bit of bitter in there and maybe just the slightest touch of saltiness in it. So I don't know, maybe our bitter should be brown. The problem with this is whatever colors we choose, somehow or another, we're going to end up with a green blueberry or something ridiculous like that. Um, it's it's going to be very difficult to choose colors that properly line up with the flavors. I don't know. You tell me in the comments what you think our flavor tube should be colored and what foods you might print with this. It will produce enough of a variety in, in flavor and texture, and then if we shape it to look like things, it might actually convince people that they are eating, if not the foods that they are used to, something uh, uh, akin to it. And it will produce enough of a variety and with enough mix and matching that we can go from, from nachos to cake on the same machine. It won't be perfect, but it might be enough to give us that variety that we need for a long term with some very basic base ideas. Well, I'm going to have some fun with this 3D printer. I'm going to see if I can get it loaded with filament and see if I can get my first uh, print going off tonight. But otherwise, I think we're going to leave it here. I want to thank you very much for watching. I want to thank my friends at M3D. I'm looking forward to telling you more about this teeny tiny little printer as this month progresses and I get to play with it a little bit more. And as always, I want to thank you very much for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon backers, your support. Again, more necessary than ever. And speaking of support, we are getting close to launching the Low Poly Dino Kickstarter. The countdown has started. So be sure to check me on Twitter to see when that countdown is counting down to. And then, as always, safety first. I'll see you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The beginner's guide to the 3D printing galaxy is here, now, for you. Buy it on Amazon.